So I, uh, back from 2011 to 2014, I worked at the U.S. Department of State, which is like the foreign ministry, and my job was working on internet freedom around the world. I had a top secret security clearance, and I was there during uh, the Edward Snowden disclosures. And as part of my job was responding to those disclosures at the United Nations with various governments around the world. Uh, and during that, I got some briefings uh, from the National Security Agency about their collection on Americans. And I learned that there was essentially using a legal loophole that I, I considered a, a wrong and, and unconstitutional to collect Americans' data. And I hired lawyers and went through the lawful disclosure process and ended up getting my disclosure heard by inspectors general, uh, which are the, the entities overseeing, um, tr trying to keep, make sure the agencies follow the law, congressional committees that oversee the intelligence agencies. Um, and I, and I got a, an article published in the Washington Post after going through pre-publication review to make sure uh, the government made sure I didn't have anything classified in there. So that happened in 2014, and then in 2017 I launched Whistleblower Aid. Well, uh, so we launched in 2017. We've always been a small startup scrappy team, but we punch above our weight. People love the work that we do, but it has been, it's hard, it's been hard to, to start a new company. We're a nonprofit company. Um, so we're, we're both looking for donations, and also our cases, depending on how we do, can end up funding um, the work. If we win money uh, for our clients, then we get a percentage uh, to keep. So those are basically our two funding streams. To date, it's mostly been donations, um, and we've handled some very big cases. Uh, our lawyers represented the anonymous Ukraine whistleblower uh, whose disclosures led to the first impeachment of President Trump. Um, we represent the Facebook whistleblower, um, and uh, we, we've had clients implicating a whole bunch of senior government officials in the United States, uh, Je Jeffrey Epstein, Harvey Weinstein, other other very big name cases. Um, the director of the CIA, Je Gina Haspel, uh, last year. So, um, yeah, I would say the interest in our cases has uh, allowed us to, to 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 make our pitch to other people to fund us. Um, so we have to sort of lead with the cases and the media coverage, and then people are interested and understand how it works, and that's how we've tried to build it, yeah. Well, we, we were here to tell the story of the Facebook whistleblower and, and the impact of her disclosures. Um, we were also here to, to tell the participants that you know, if you work at a big tech company or a small tech company and you see someone breaking the law or doing something wrong, we're here to help you. Um, and so, you know, even in Scandinavia, people can come to us. Um, obviously, you can go to our website, whistleblowerade.org. You can give us money. Um, we need money uh, to, to represent clients. Everything we do for our clients is free, pro bono, unless we, we, we win money for them. Um, so, you know, we're dependent on donations to make this work. If you're seeing something wrong, number one, don't tell your boss, don't tell a journalist, don't tell your friends. Talk to a lawyer before you do anything else. Create a secure communication channel, ideally in person. If not, use the Signal communication app. Don't use email. Don't try to gain unauthorized access to documents or evidence that you don't have authorized access to. With that said, lawfully secure the evidence and build a plan with a lawyer for a lawful disclosure process that can have impact and keep you safe.